Here is an example where we are going to look at a two-dimensional oblique collision. So basically what's going to happen is uh, ball A will move towards ball B like a snooker ball. They will collide, bang, and then separate. Okay, but first, let us do 3A. State the principle of conservation of momentum. All right, so um, let me make the screen bigger a bit first. Principle of conservation of momentum. The sum of the momentum or the total momentum of a system is always the same. Conserve, ma. so when you see conservation, the word conserve, con conserve environment. So conservation here means momentum always the same. No? So I would say that the total momentum must have total, ah, everybody total momentum in a system is always constant. So it's always constant unless, what is the condition? Unless there is an external force. So unless acted on by an external resultant force. Okay, make sure you also mention the condition, okay? So the first mark is when you say total momentum in a system is always constant, constant, one mark. And then unless it's acted on, okay? Or unless acted on by an external or uh, resultant force, or you could say that if there is no resultant force acting on the object. Any sentence that means the same thing, just make it very clear, okay? So let's look at 3B now. Here we have our two uh, balls, okay? This is before collision. A is uh, headed towards B at a velocity of B. Okay, so A has a velocity of B. After collision, A will fly in this direction at a velocity of 6 meter per second. Okay. B has uh, no, no velocity. It was stationary. That's stationary ball B. Okay. But the thing about B is uh, it's 12 kg. Uh, so it's a lot more, three times the mass of A. So B will travel downwards at this speed, 3.5 meter per second, okay? Uh, they have given you all of this, including the angles of collision measured from the initial horizontal path, okay? So it says here, by considering the momentum, the components of momentum at right angles to the direction of the initial path of ball A, calculate theta. So there are two ways to do this question. You can either draw a vector diagram mm -hmm. or you can resolve vectors. But whenever they tell you uh, considering the components, oh, then whenever you see this component, you also know I uh, have to resolve some vector. Okay, and the vector that we are resolving is momentum. Okay, let's go resolve now. Pen a bit thick. Let me change thickness. Okay, so let's say I want to uh, start by resolving the component of the velocity for the ball A. So I will resolve this one. Uh, so you see it is pointing upwards and to the right. So you have an upward component like this, pointing upwards. And you have another component that's pointing to the right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So I hope you are familiar enough by now that if you are the vector component sitting right beside theta, if you don't know how to resolve, go and check out the vector videos in the chapter one or the check the playlist, guys. Just check the playlist. Okay. It's okay to review back what you forgot. Right. It happens to all of us. So anyway, back to this. So the velocity is six meter per second, but I'm resolving this. So this one will become six. Beside the angle, uh, so side beside the angle will be 6 cos theta. Opposite the angle, this will be 6 sine theta. Okay, they were quite specific here. They mentioned that we should consider the vector component that is right angle to the direction. So which component is right angle to the direction? 6 sine theta. They're telling you, yo, my dudes, use 6 sine theta. Okay, can I probably need to also resolve 3.5 meter per second, which I will do so. This one has a vector component pointing downwards because the vector is going down this way. 
right? So there's a vector going down and there's another vector going to the right here. Okay, body. Mm. All right, so this one will be 3.5 cos 30 degree because it's right beside the 30 degree angle. And this one would be 3.5 sine 30. Okay, yeah? all right. So if you need to, you can draw a right angle triangle to help you. But generally, the way my brain does it is if you're beside the angle, cos. If you're opposite the angle, sine cos of the right angle triangle. All right. So right now, I want to bring things together. Meaning, you know how we say the cons from conservation of momentum, the total momentum of the system doesn't change. So I will say something along the lines where from conservation of momentum, the sum of the initial momentum must be equal to the sum of the final momentum. But this one I would take in the y direction because this y direction is the direction that is right angle to the direction of the initial movement, the vertical direction. Okay, so let's look at the vertical direction now. Teacher, what's the initial momentum for vertical? Zero, lo. initial A move horizontally. Ma. So the initial vertical momentum is zero. So this one will be zero. Okay. And then the final vertical momentum should also be zero. But what is the vertical momentum after the collision? You have both A going upwards and you have B going downwards. So they should cancel out. La. All right. So right now I'm going to uh, multiply. This is the vertical component. So 6 sine theta times 4. Let's put that down. 6 sine theta. We are looking for theta, by the way. So it's okay that theta is here. Times 4. Plus, okay, what about the other one? The other one would be 12 times 3.5 sine 30. So the vertical component, okay? But this is pointing in the downward direction. So it needs a big negative sign here. Okay, so 12 times negative 3.5 sine 30. So 12 negative 3.5 sine 30. Okay, so I'll rearrange this and I guess I'll do 6 times 3.5. So on one side, I'll have 21. I'll bring the whole thing over. And the other side, I will have 24 sine theta. So I can now sine inverse 21 over 24. And this will give me 61 degree. Write your answer in 2SF. Huh? It's 61.0, but good enough. So you may be thinking, teacher, where is the three marks? Okay. So the first mark is when... Uh, there is evidence, you get your first score, when there's evidence of you using the equation P is equal to mass times velocity. You got resolved correctly, don't resolve correctly, didn't resolve anything, you just randomly take some mass times some velocity. Preferably, you write the equation. Write equation. Because sometimes if let's say you don't write the equation and you get you make a mistake, then the examiner can be like, I don't know the students is using MB. So then you will not be given your credit. So to be safe, write the equation. In fact, you don't even let's say you notice, oh no, I didn't write the equation. So what do you do? You just write here, no? P equal MV at the side. Then you show no? this is V times M. See? This is M times V. There's no problem if your answers are correct. The problem arises when your answers are wrong. So please show your working. You can write your equation or you can just write it aside like what I do right now. Okay. Second mark is this substitution. Everything here correct is one mark. Everything here from the zero to this whole sentence here. Okay. And the final answer is one mark. Okay. So this is, you care about the type of marks. Then this one is, I cannot delete. Okay, so anyway, it's C1, C1, A1. So that's it for this part. Can you draw a vector diagram? Sure. Do you need to draw a vector diagram? Yeah. 
Okay, let's move on to part two. No, wait, you can you draw? You cannot draw, sorry. You must use the component. Resolve vector only. And also this is the easier way. La. No diagrams. You can always draw one to double check if you have time. All right, but let's move on to part two. Okay, using your answer, show that the speed of ball, uh, speed v of ball a is twelve meter per second. Explain your working. Well, since we already did the vertical component, what remains to do is the horizontal component. Okay, so the horizontal component here, number one, the four kg is traveling at the speed of e. correct and then after that the 4 kg will have 6 cos theta and 4 and 12 times 3.5 cos 30. so the initial momentum must be the same as the final momentum initial momentum is 4 times b calculate here so sum of the initial is equal to sum of the final but we're going to do this in the x component. Okay, we're doing this in the x component. So initial momentum, we have 4 times v. Final momentum, since they are both also pointing to the right, 6 cos theta is pointing to the right, 3.5 cos 30 pointing to the right, so they're all positive. That's why this one is 4 times 6 cos theta plus 12 times 3.5 cos 30. 12. 3.5 cos 30. Okay. So just do it carefully. Resolve. It should be fine. Okay. I have uh, moved the working over here. Right. So now you want to find all the... This one is so yeah, my four went for the uh, four v. Okay, so if we take the initial momentum in and the final momentum in the x component direction, so this will be four v. This one is twenty four. We have found theta just now, so it's cos sixty one plus twelve times three point five cos thirty. Okay, la, time to bring out calculator to calculate. 4 cos 61 plus 12 times 3.5 cos 30 divided by 4. I got 12.002. So 12 meter per second. Proven. Okay. So where are your two marks? Let's see. The first one is when you start off with some form of some format of conservation of momentum, maybe something like this. And then also at the same time, it has to be the correct horizontal component. So I must see cos theta here, cos theta here. So these two lines is one mark. Using horizontal component. C1. Okay. And then substituting the right other values, this will be A1. Okay. All right, part three. By calculating, uh, by calculation of kinetic energies, say and explain whether the collision is elastic or inelastic. So if they ask you for kinetic energy, remember there are two methods to decide whether a collision is elastic or inelastic. Number one, we can compare the kinetic energy, which is what the question wants from us. Number two, we could use relative velocities. But you see, the problem with relative velocities in a 2D collision is, my dude, this relative velocity you draw vector diagram, you know, it's just so if it's not 1D, you cannot use the relative velocity equation that we've been using so far. That is in the table. Okay. So we use relative velocity only if they ask you to. And normally they will only ask you to do it, or you will only what would want to do it if it's one dimension. Okay, so let's calculate the kinetic energy before and after the collision. Did you have done this before? I know. Pause the video. You do it. Then compare with my answer. So anyway, initial kinetic energy. Only particle uh, A is moving. So let's write down the kinetic energy. So, nah, initial kinetic energy. 
is only a. Okay, so it's half mass of a. And then the velocity of a we calculated just now was 12. Maybe the game teacher, if I didn't get 12, can I use the 12? I can. The reason why they ask you to show that the value of b is 12 is so that in case you can't show, you can still use for the next part. All right, let's look at the final ke. Okay, final ke need to revisit the oblique v-shaped collision, and that's how you like ta have to find x y no need no need no need no need. Ke is vector is scalar, and because uh kinetic energy is scalar, you can just add them together no problem. So this four kg is traveling at six meter per second. Okay, so scalar quantity, no problem, just add only. Okay, and Finally, uh, the 12 kg is traveling at 3.5 meter per second. Okay, so I'm going to transfer all of this calculation back to the spot. Okay, and now I can press my calculator to calculate or to compare the kinetic energies before and after the collision. So before the collision is half times 4 times 12 square, this will be 288 joule. To be frank, it doesn't look very promising for conservation. Okay, 2 times 6 square. This is 72 plus... Mm, 73.5. So this would be 145.5. So you can see the initial and final kinetic energy is not the same. Okay, then you can just make a conclusion. So you will say that the kinetic energy before and after the collision, before and after collision is not conserved or not equal. Hence, collision is inelastic okay so always provide evidence uh. don't just say oh kinetic energy not the same how you know not the same you must calculate first what calculate the initial calculate the final show them the numbers then you say oh see 288 is not the same as 145 not conserved we lost some energy some energy is lost for example some energy you don't have to write this but this is for your notes Loss as heat and sound. Oh, took you a long time to change color. I want to. So some energy is lost as heat and sound. Okay. So kinetic energy before and after collision not conserved, and the collision is inelastic. So whenever you have the two D oblique collision, remember to resolve your x and y component, and then like what you did for projectile and what I generally recommend when doing vectors, do the vertical component and the horizontal components separately and sometimes the question is very nice they will guide you along the way all right i'll see you in the next video take care goodbye now try some questions you wait for what go and try go and try go do some questions Bye bye